Hello and welcome to the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry. I'm Janine Arlott, a postdoc in Elisabeth Binder's lab. And I really liked our study because it combined different layers of omics data. At the one end, we had the genomic data, in our case, the single nucleotide polymorphism. And at the other hand, we used gene expression data on the transcriptome level. And we also integrated the environment in our study. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Binder. I'm the director of the Department of Translational Research in Psychiatry at the Max Planck Institute of Psychiatry in Munich in Germany. My department focuses on uncovering the molecular mechanisms that contribute to risk for psychiatric disorders. Risk for psychiatric disorders is conferred by both genetic as well as environmental influences. The strongest environmental risk factor is actually adverse life events experienced especially during childhood. We know that not everybody exposed to such adverse life events will actually suffer from a psychiatric disorders. So that the hypothesis is the genetic variation actually changes the extent to which these confer risk and resilience to psychiatric disorders. One of the systems that actually mediates many of the physiological responses to stress is the stress hormone system. And the hypothesis that is tested in this manuscript is whether genetic variation that alters the immediate cellular response to stress, especially the transcriptome, also alters risk and resilience to suffer from psychiatric disorders after exposure to adverse life events. A system that is at the interface between the environment and the organism and that mediates gene and environment interaction is the stress hormone system. When exposed to stress, this system is rapidly activated and it leads to the release of cortisol into the peripheral bloodstream. And cortisol itself prepares the body for the fight and flight response, but it also allows to shut down the system when the stress is over. This negative feedback is mediated by the glucocorticoid receptor which is known to have a disturbed function in stress-related disorders like depression. The glucocorticoid receptor itself is a transcription factor that binds to the DNA at specific binding sites and it thereby regulates the transcription of a large number of genes. The response to GR activation was measured by using dexamethasone, which is a synthetic glucocorticoid. To assess the effect of genetic variation on gene expression, we use the gene expression quantitative trait loci approach, in short EQTL approach. This approach assumes that gene expression levels can be combined with genotype data in the same way as any other phenotype, such as age or body height. An example of an EQTL is shown here in this figure. Individuals with a G allele show a higher gene expression level than individuals with the A allele. Our objective was to identify the genotype effect on the gene expression change by using a stimulated EQTL approach. We used two different gene expression conditions, baseline and after TR stimulation. For baseline gene expression, which is indicated by red color, there is no expression difference among the genotypes. But in the GR stimulated condition, indicated in blue, Individuals with a C allele have a higher expression level than individuals with a T allele. Such an EQTL will only be detected when using our stimulated EQTL approach. For our stimulated EQTL study, we generated and analyzed a dataset of 160 male individuals. Our first observation was that GR response EQTLs are highly enriched in GR binding sites and they also behave differently from the SNPs that regulate the baseline gene expression. We further found that GR response EQTLs are more distant than the SNPs that regulate the baseline gene expression. One possible explanation for this long-range regulation could be a chromatin interaction between the eSNP locus and the regulated transcript. For one of our EQTLs, we confirmed such a physical interaction spanning 130 kilobases. Interestingly, the interaction frequency was increased after stimulation with the GR agonist dexamethasone. Besides their functional characterization, another important question was 
whether the genetic variances that alter the transcriptomal response to GR activation would be also associated with the risk to predict stress-related psychiatric disorders like depression. So far, there is no locus known that reaches genome by significance, and the reason for this unsuccessful results could be that all these studies left out the environmental component, which we now can integrate with our stimulated EQTL approach. To answer this hypothesis, we calculated the overlap between depression case control GWAS SNPs and our GR response expression SNPs. We detected a high overlap between both SNP sets, which was significantly higher than what we would expect from chance or baseline expression SNPs. Additionally, we tested whether the enrichment is specific to psychiatric disorders and applied our enrichment test to other stress-related psychiatric disorders, other common diseases and general quantitative traits. Our results showed that GR response expression SNPs contribute only to the risk for depression and schizophrenia. They also indicate that disease-relevant stimuli in EQTL approaches can identify novel candidates for common disorders. Next, we investigated whether the genes that are regulated by GR response expression SNPs and that are associated with depression are involved in a specific pathway that is maybe relevant for the passive physiology of stress-related psychiatric disorders. We were able to generate a gene network that is tightly interconnected and this network further revealed that the gene products are highly co-expressed or co-localized and share protein domains. And these results provide support that the gene products functionally interact to perform an orchestrated function. We did not only identify transcripts regulated by acute glucocorticoid receptor activation in human blood, but also in the mouse brain. The majority of the transcripts that are affected by the risk profile score SNPs were also differentially regulated in mouse blood and brain following glucocorticoid receptor activation. Furthermore, we were able to extend this finding by utilizing an acute social defeat stress mouse model. This model is a valuable tool to induce depression-like behavior in mice. Results from our imaging genetics study provide one potential neural pathway by which our novel risk profile SNPs may promote the development of stress-related disorders. In this analysis, we compared the amygdala response to angry and fearful faces in relation to neutral faces and found that individuals with higher risk profile scores had blunted reactivity relative to individuals with lower risk profile scores. Finally, I would like to thank all the people that are involved in the study and I would like to thank you for watching this video.